are those who see the challenges facing the nation and say, send me. They fight for country. They fight for honor. They fight to win. Do you have what it takes? Find out at GoArmy.com slash Warriors. Why didn't you book your family vacation on a travel site? At Hilton.com, I get the price match guarantee, and I can choose from their 14 different hotel brands, so I get the right hotel for every member of my family. Like a double tree for my cousins who love their warm chocolate chip cookies, a Homewood Suites for my uncle who likes a long stay, a Hampton for my sister and her kids. It's a lot of syrup. And the Waldorf Astoria Beverly Hills for me. But I thought your family vacation was in Miami. It is. I hear they're having a great time. Book at Hilton.com and get the Hilton price match guarantee. If you find a lower rate, we match it and give you 25% off that stay. Here comes the rain. What's that, girl? Who needs help? Take me to her! We're coming boat! Why aren't we taking roads? Oh! Oh, you made it! Do you have change for a dollar? This was the emergency? Yes, I was busy. 24-hour roadside assistance from America's number one motorcycle insurer. You know, I think you're my best friend. You don't have to say I'm your best friend. That's okay. Women's Soccer Championship on FS1, brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Today from Georgetown and Shaw Field, number four, Georgetown hosting Butler in a rematch of last year's Big East Final. Let's check out how these two teams got to this championship. Butler took down Providence, three to two, holding off the Friars, who made a late effort to try to move into the final. Meanwhile, Georgetown took down Xavier, Three to one as they advance to their third straight Big East championship. And we are so glad you decided to join us on FS1 alongside Monica Moore. I'm Bernie Gunther. This is the perfect setup for this Big East final. You got a Hoya team trying to win their third straight championship. Meanwhile, these Butler Bulldogs, the senior class knows what it takes to win it because they won it as freshmen. Given the experience of both of these two teams, this is exactly the tournament championship we expected. These two teams picked to finish first and second, respectively, in the preseason and standings. I think the question mark for Butler today after being held scoreless last year in the championship final and during the regular season, can their offense find a way to score against the Georgetown defense? Well, there's some questions going into this season for the Hoyas because they graduated so many All-Americans. They had to replace the entire midfield, but the one thing we found out is the midfield, it is solid, and the seniors, they've stepped up. Ariel Sheckman has lived up to every expectation. She leads the country in shutouts and save percentage. She's second and goals against average and Caitlin Farrell has been fantastic in Big East play. She is the go-to person on the Hoyas offense. Well, a year ago, the Butler team went on this field. They went without a goal. So the question is, what is different about the Bulldogs this season? Well, everyone knows about Paige Monahan and her capabilities on offense. Today, she's going to have a bit more of a defensive focus, which means her teammates are going to have to step up. And one of them is Anya Savitz. She's the Big East Freshman of the Year. Seven goals, three assists already. She's going to have to have a big game. So what are the keys to this Big East final? We go down to the field. Third member our team, Marissa Pillett, talked to the coaching staff. Thanks, Bernie. Yes, head coach for the Georgetown Hoyas, Dave Nolan, told me playing in a conference championship never gets old. And he should know his team is going for their third straight Big East title today. He said that was a goal since the beginning of the season. And if they're going to have any success against Butler, he wants them to own possession throughout the match and dictate their own pace of play. For Butler, Terry St. John said she asked her girls to be more attack-minded today, and they look to get success on their transition play. She says she knows she has a very dedicated group of girls. As you said, this senior class won the Big East Conference in their 20 in the 2015 season, their freshman year, and they want nothing more than to finish out their college career, bookending that with another Big East championship. Well, it should be so much fun. Georgetown unbeaten, fourth in the country, looking for their third straight Big East title. Butler trying to upset the Hoyas with a trophy on the line today from our nation's capital.
All right, here we go from Shawfield in Washington, D.C., the Big East Women's Soccer Championship, Butler Bulldogs, and number four, Georgetown Hoyas. Let's check out the starters today for the Butler Bulldogs. And we talked about Ariel Schechtman, who is going to be in goal, but the second-best goalkeeper in the Big East, Hannah Litke, is going to be in net for the Butler Bulldogs. She is, and she's going to start this first half. Butler always changes goalkeepers in the second half, so don't be surprised to see that. But Hannah Litke is a sensational goalkeeper. She's very experienced, and she knows what it's like to face this Hoyas offense. Very offensive-minded, 4-2-4, four, four, and for Georgetown. You talked about Caitlin Farrell up top, but Carusa, the graduate from Stanford, she has really made Georgetown dynamic offensively and she joins Kaylin Farrell up top offensively. She draws a lot of attention in her own right. Second team, all Big East. She's great with her back to her defender. She can turn very quickly. Belbaski lost it right away. The Hoyas, they're really going to try to work to try to possess it, but this is Savage, the Big East freshman of the year, and just not patient enough with her first touch. But Butler working, and they have still won it back. They're being very offensive-minded early on, trying to get some good passing through the center of the field, looking over on that right side. Paige Monahan, number four. We've talked a lot about her. Again, she's going to have double duty today. She's got a lot of defensive responsibilities, but they run a lot of the offense through her. Megan Nally throws it in. She is the Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Savage, the freshman, trying to work and win it in the corner. And you see the smart play there by Kelly Ann Livingstone. She is one of the anchors of this Georgetown defense. She's very good at turning, not giving up the corner kick. Instead, will settle for this close-range throw. And Annika Schmidt is going to take this throw. She's one of the top defenders. In fact, one of the few defenders on that first team, all Big East. And she had a big goal against Providence in the semis. Deep throw in. Into the box, Butler trying to win it back. Got love has won it back and then quickly served in by Monica Schmidt. You see the speed there of Got love. I was really impressed with her the first time these two teams met this year. She's another player, doesn't get a lot of attention, but she is big in this Butler's offense. It is absolutely a perfect day in our nation's capital for soccer. 56 degrees, blue skies. It can't ask for anything better. And I think after the matchup between these two teams, they played earlier this year at Shawfield, the wind was so strong in that contest. It was a different game depending on which side of the field you were on. I think both coaches struggled with that. And of course, when Georgetown in the second half switched sides of the field, it was huge. Here comes Georgetown's trying to strike first, and they found the back of the net. Three minutes in. Caitlin Ferry. She is just that good. She is the player that has found a way to score against every single team in the Big East this year. What a senior season she has had. The unanimous Big East Offensive Player of the Year. And you see what happens when you give Caitlin Farrell a little space. Kira Carusa and Grace Nguyen setting this up for Caitlin Farrell. You see a couple of steps, the quick strike. She is very good from distance. And how about that outlet pass by the Georgetown Hoyas to set up Keelan Farrell. Started all 20 games. The Big East leading scorer now with 17 goals and three assists. She's had seven game-winning goals already this season. Kowalski doing a nice job there on the counterattack. Ariel Shackman, I was talking about this earlier in this contest. She is so good. If it's one-on-one -on -one with Shackman or if it's a shot from distance, she's going to see it very well. If Butler wants a good opportunity today, I think it's going to be on a set piece, a corner, where you have a lot of people crashing in, maybe someone getting a piece of it in the air. And they feel like her power with her kicking game really does change the course. You saw what a huge kick she had 
already pinning the Butler Bulldogs on their heels. And it's interesting when you can have a goalkeeper that can also be one of your biggest offensive threats as well. I've talked about this a lot this season in terms of Ariel Sheckman. People focus a lot on the numbers, the save percentage, the goals against average, but her kicking game is second to none, and it's one of the big things that gets this Georgetown offense going and takes the other teams off guard. They send it in to Carusa. Trying to play it across Megan Nally settling it and it's finally going to be cleared to midfield. And Bernie, I think you have to think a little bit back to last year in that Big East tournament final when Georgetown scored in the seventh minute. It really changed that contest. And once again, you have Georgetown with an early score in the contest here today. Jenna Royson making a great run. And sends it across and it's going to be corralled by Lipke. The defensive backs for Georgetown, Megan Nally and Jenna Royson, do such a good job of pushing into the offense so their opponents have to defend those players, and it stretches out the field for other players on this Georgetown offense. It gets them a little more daylight. It's one of the biggest keys to Georgetown's offensive success. I was not surprised to see Royson getting the start today for that reason. And how big was that goal against... Anna Litke, that's only the sixth goal that she's allowed all season. Butler hasn't allowed a whole lot of first-half goals because we've seen Litke start in goal to begin a lot of matches. A lot of the goals scored against the Butler Bulldogs have come in the second half. And so that's so huge that three minutes into this Big East final, Georgetown already with a 1-0 advantage. Well, and as we talked about, it just changes the mindset. It gives Georgetown a lot of confidence, and meanwhile, Butler knows that they have their work cut out for them right now. The freshman Savage trying to give chase, but it's back to Ariel Sheckman, the Geese goalkeeper of the year, second straight season. Last year, fifth in the nation in goals against average and first in the country in shutouts. And she comes back this season with a 0.24 goals against average. So if you're wondering, not a whole lot of contests go on where Georgetown gives up any goals at all as they try to go up 2 nothing. as this one's going to be cleared out of play and it'll be a throw in in the offensive third for Georgetown. Tony Russo leading up our Big East referee crew today on this perfect day for a championship in our nation's capital. Good composure. Jermina Watnick is so creative with the ball. She's one of the players out on the field that has the best footwork. She is so tactically savvy. And I think she's the player people are already thinking about next year that's going to take over some of this offensive load that Caitlin Farrell has had this year for the Hoyas. Well, the biggest difference this year for Georgetown is they brought on Kira Carusa, who's a graduate who won the national championship a year ago with the Stanford Cardinal. She comes in tied for six in the Big East with seven goals scored, but her seven assists, that's really what set her apart. And I feel like that's made Caitlin Farrell even better as you see Carusa find the ball inside the penalty zone and we have seen Caruso with a really big first half already. She's so good at trapping the balls, turning in traffic and setting up her teammates and it really just shows you how tough the Big East was this year. She's second team all Big East. I think there was certainly an argument for her to be on the first team given the numbers that she's put up and how critical she is in terms of this Hoyas offense. Get out! Caruso playing today in her 87th career game, eighth in the NCAA among active players. And Livingstone has been a standout in the opening minutes of this contest on defense. She has really anchored that back line very well for Georgetown so far. Caruso sends it out to Royson. Hoya spreading the field. And on the near post, an opportunity for Paula Jamino Watnick. Nguyen just did not have the angle there. I think a little frustrated with herself that she didn't turn a little more to the right as you're going to see this set up by the Hoyas. The offense just comes in waves. Jermina Watnick settling it. And again, not the angle there for Nguyen, but she is going to get some opportunities today. She's one of the players that has stepped up the most for Georgetown this year. 
you talk about the kicking game hey, 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 and the Let difference there, Lidke barely able to clear it out of the offensive third and at Georgetown right back at it. Meanwhile, Errol Sheckman, she cleared midfield and more with her kicks. Goalkeepers going to play such a big role in this Big East final. Right now, two players that are going to be very important for Butler as they move forward are their two top defenders, Julia Leonard and Annika Schmidt. Paula Domino Watnick tried to have a fancy footwork to get it into the back of the net. Couldn't get good contact. But you see just how many offensive opportunities Georgetown has already gotten in this contest. This is what they do. They just pour on the offense. They continue to knock on the doorstep and eventually find a way to score. Well, for more on the Hoyas, let's go down to the field once again to Marissa. Thanks, Bernie. This Hoyas offense is playing really well right now, and a lot has to do with number 12, Grace Wynn. You can see her with the ball right now. She already has an assist. She recorded a shot just moments ago, and head coach for the Hoyas, Dave Nolan, told me that Wynn really has come into her own this season. She used to play pretty timid on the ball, always wanted to pass before she shot, but they asked her to be a little more aggressive this year. They love how her first look is always forward, and they love how aggressive and adventurous she's being in the attacking third and she scored her first career goal this season against Creighton all biggies second team this season and you see these players in their careers they, they come in in advance even take a look at uh, the Big East player of the year offensively and Keelan Farrell she made her first career start in the NCAA College Cup a year ago it takes time to get in get opportunities build confidence but that's the one thing is I feel like Dave Nolan in his 15th season here, he's started to really find some players to help rebuild for the Hoya team as they found offense everywhere. They were really worried with the graduation of their entire midfield. How would they be this year? How do you replace a midfield of Rachel Corbeau's, Taylor Pack, and Chloe Knott? That was a huge question mark for the Hoyas, but when you look at what Nguyen and Nizalek and Trissel have done stepping into those positions. Those players were just biding their time, waiting for an opportunity to shine. And I have been so impressed with all three of them, really the unsung heroes for the Hoyas this year. I'm going against Paige Monahan, all Big East first team forward for Butler. This is going to be a good opportunity here for Georgetown. Carson Nizalek does such a great job setting up these plays for the Hoyas. She was the player, of course, that had that penalty kick against Xavier in the semifinals that really changed that contest, getting Georgetown's first point on the scoreboard. Sends it towards the far post. Well, they're trying to clear it. And after the first two or three minutes where the Bulldogs really had a push, the last 10 minutes have been played in the Georgetown Hoy offensive third. Jamina Watnick going to goal. That was some nice defense by Annika Schmidt. Well, Dave Nolan, part of the Big East coaching staff of the year, 15th season here at Georgetown. He's the national coaching staff of the year two years ago where Georgetown made it to the College Cup in the Final Four. It's interesting because he talked about you come into every season and every team has a vision of trying to do something that teams have never done before. And he said right around game 11 or 12, he said this could be the first team to go through the regular season unbeaten. That's really a, a marvelous thing to think about for Georgetown as here they stand in the Big East final, one of two teams in the nation unbeaten, the other the defending national champion Stanford Cardinal. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that this team just remains so level. They don't get too high, they don't get too low. Nothing seems to phase them. It's just business as usual. Lipke comes out off her line and helps make the play. It was last touched by Paula Jamino Watnick. It's gonna be a goal kick coming for Butler. She has been under fire throughout this contest so far. Hannah Lipke doing a good job back in goal. Her communication is so good with that defensive back line. That's really one of her top qualities. And again, she's only a redshirt junior, so she's going to be back next year. I think you're just seeing a little frustration 
right now for Butler. Things just not going their way. Monahan not able to get that one going. Just her expression. Savage, who came in, was at camp two years ago, told the coaching staff of Butler that she was going to come in and be the Big East freshman of the year. Imagine the tenacity of that, being a sophomore in high school, making those calls, has come in and has been the Big East freshman of the year, but so far she's kind of been a non-factor in this Big East championship game. What do they have to do to get Savage an opportunity more often? Well, one thing they need to try to do is to get some opportunities in transition with Georgetown spending so much time in their offensive third, making something happen in transition, spotting Savage or Stelboski, who has been really big for them in the postseason so far would be a good way to get this team going. When you have Georgetown back and their defense is all set up, they're just very strong. It's hard to get a ball past them. Schmidt can't make contact. And Gutlove, again, I've talked a little bit about her so far, but she was a standout to me in the prior meeting. She's another player that can really help set up this offense. Julia Leonard was trying to compose it, brings it up. Now this is still Baskey. Throw in coming for Butler in their offensive third. Amanda Kowalski co-coaches for the Butler Bulldogs. Coach Allman and St. John coaching together. Trying to figure out what it takes to find the back of the net. We talked about Savage, the Big East freshman of the year. That is one of the big difference makers for Butler from when these two teams faced one another a season ago in the Big East championship. Savage composed it for the moment, but then gave it right back away as it's going to be cleared across by Kellyanne Livingstone. That was another really nice defensive play, though, by Annika Schmidt. I just, despite the fact that she's first team all Big East, I don't think she gets as much attention as she deserves. She has been everywhere. That's Schmidt again on defense for Butler. Paige Monahan brings it up to Savage. Monahan trying to make an overlapping run, and then Savage gave it right back away to Jamina Watnick in La Hoyas. You see it's very physical out on the field right now. These two teams really giving it everything they have. A great battle between Gutlove and Nguyen, Nizalek, Jermina Watnick. And the challenge right now for this Butler team is not only to have to try to find a way to get it past Ariel Schechtman, who is the top goalkeeper in the Big East, albeit maybe the entire country, but they've got to have a chance to get a shot on goal. And Schechtman, to her credit, she has a fabulous midfield and defense that's in front of her. She only made 63 saves this season. Well, it's certainly true. She is the Big East Goalkeeper of the Year, and I think that's well-deserved. But that back line in front of her, anchored by Kellyanne Livingstone, Jenna Stout, Megan Nolly, Jenna Royson, and Leah McCullough, they have done an excellent job. They don't let opposing teams get very good looks at goal. Everything is well-covered and well-defended. And they pride themselves on shutting teams out. It's not just Sheckman, but that defensive back line. They hate to see goals go in the net. Winning is not enough for them. Bulldogs trying to find some composure, trying to hold it and work their way up the field. There hasn't been a whole lot of possession here in the first half for the Butler Bulldogs. They are going to get the foul there. And again, it's going to come down to maximizing opportunities because even when they've had opportunities to push forward, they just haven't had good looks on goal. We have Sheckman, who's only given up two goals in Big East play. Julia Leonard will take the free kick. They call her the heartbeat of the team. Said that she's played like a senior from the moment that she stepped on campus. She's really the other player on this Butler team. It shocks me sometimes she doesn't get as much attention as I would like to see her get because those two defensive players who work in front of Lidke, such a huge part of Butler's success and their ability to not let opposing teams score. There's a good ball. Blocka. Another player I'd like to see get going today is Amanda Kowalski. And a win with a beautiful ball played through. And 
It is going to turn into a corner kick opportunity. So Grace Noyan takes most of these corner kick opportunities for Georgetown. We've talked about how she has come into her own this season, and this is one of the things she does exceptionally well. They often send Jermina Watnick over to give a second option. The window will play it towards the near post. Top of the 18. And the freshman of the year, Savage, came in and made the play, but the ball rolled across and out of play, and it'll be a throw-in coming for Georgetown just before it's cleared up field. So we've talked a little bit about how physical it is out on the field. That's Livingstone with possession for Georgetown, and you see the play by Savage. Caruso plays it back. Megan Nally will throw it in again. Caruso, the win. Nice ball played back. Trussell. And it was a good look on the outside by Carson Nizalek. Three goals, four assists. They say that she has a huge high IQ on the pitch. High School Valley Victorian back in Virginia. They're going to switch things up right now. It's Nizalek heading over to take this opportunity for the Hoyas. And you saw in that last possession how unselfish Georgetown is. They just work the ball around. They try to find the best offensive angle. Litke got a hand on it. Caruso was right there for the Hoyas. And one of the Bulldogs still down. Keep it up, Vaughn. Keep it up, Vaughn. Sure, that's Schmidt. It is Annika Schmidt, slow to get back to her feet. And again, she is very critical to this defensive unit for Butler. Coach St. John calls her the team warrior, covered in bruises because of the tackle she makes at the end of the contest. She and really does there. have the heart of a lion, never complaining, would absolutely run through a brick wall. You see the struggles for Butler, they just have trouble playing the ball back up from the back and making any combinations here. Georgetown has just been a step quicker today to the ball. They've won a lot of the 50-50 balls. And just the passing has not been as crisp for the Bulldogs in order to set something up quickly. Kaylin Farrell the Big East Offensive Player of the Year. Struck in the first five minutes of this one, giving number four Georgetown a one-nothing advantage. This is gonna be Nizalek once again for the Hoyas. Georgetown just has had so many opportunities off set pieces. Schmidt got a head on it for Butler. But Georgetown sending it back in again. Caruso heads it over and out of play. Another good opportunity created for the Hoyas and Kira Carusa. She is so dangerous because she's very quick and she always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Butler's second place finish, their highest finish ever in the regular season since joining the Big East. A part of the big reason why they were so successful this year, they were 9-0 and at home. And only once this season, the Bulldogs trailed while playing back at home in Indianapolis. But it was a much different story for Butler on the road, 4-5-1 and this season. That was Annika Schmidt again. Kira Caruso was in striking distance. And Schmidt came up big, preventing Caruso from getting a good opportunity. She has been the standout on the afternoon so far for the Bulldogs, in my opinion. Another opportunity, trying to find Caruso to win, trying to settle it. She's got the ball at her feet, and a nice ball played out. Trissel had a chance. And that was Schmidt again. And look at this, Megan Nally steps up from the back to win it back. And 
Schmidt is basically, she's playing in one of those center back positions, and that has her marking up on Kira Carusa quite a bit. Savage pointing her way, and her team does get the throwing back. As Butler gets set to make the first substitution of this match. See, for the Butler Bulldogs, Cook coming in at defense. Two nothing was the score when these two teams met earlier in the season. In favor of Georgetown, right now the Hoyas with a one nothing advantage in the first half. Is Cook the junior from Waldorf, Maryland. And they have her over on the near sideline where she's going to be matching up a lot right with here, Kira sir. Cook. I'm sorry, Kira Carusa and with Paula Germino Watnick as well. Carusa switching fields. Georgetown can attack you from anywhere on the pitch. Wow, Caitlin Farrell. That is what she did so well last year was sending in those crosses. She had a lot of players who could finish on those opportunities. For more on Cook, we go back down to the field. Marissa. Thanks. Assistant coach Rob Clotter was telling Kira Cook to stay near the six-yard line. He doesn't want, he wants her pinned up right against the 18, but stay square to the six-yard line. She's in charge of guarding Paula Germina Watnick man-to-man. -man. He doesn't want her pushing too far up. He wants her to stay back in the defensive stance and make sure that they don't get any more runs into the box. Great insight there. And just points out, too, we talk a lot about the fact that Butler has the co-head coaches, but Rob Cloddy also is such a huge part of that. They really have these three outstanding coaches on the bench, and I think the way that they work so well together, just the synergy between them, it's really a big reason for all the success that Butler has had over the years. Elise Delbaski out of the game. Macy Miller in, and this is gut love. Trying to get an opportunity in front there, trying to find Paige Monahan. And look at this set piece opportunity coming for Butler. Butler scored all three of their goals against Providence in the air, and that's why corner pieces like this are so huge for Butler. And this is the best opportunity that Butler has had so far. This afternoon, they have Savage over to take this corner kick. Savage and Gutlove in the corner. Savage plays it towards the top of the six. And they found Julia Leonard. And they're still going to have the throw in here. Pope struck really well there by Savage. Monica Schmidt will throw it in. 18 and a half to play in the first. As the Bulldogs try to even it up. Well defended by the Hoyas and you see Farrell continuing to push. With Stelboski out of the game too, you have to wonder who in terms of the offense Monahan and Savage are good opportunities. Gut love. And Macy Miller as well can be very explosive, the player that they sent in to replace Delboski. Of course, Delboski is one of the seniors, and she's a player that has a lot of unfinished business because she did not get to travel when her team won the Big East Championship a couple of years ago because she was injured, so she has not had that opportunity to, to win on the field, even though she was such a, a big part of that championship team. How about the defense by Royson? And right now, Butler just backpedaling. Got the ball in some space, and Savage has got her hand up saying, play it through to me, but standing in the way of getting it to Savage was Kellyanne Livingston. 
who came up with a loose ball and cleared it back the other way for the Hoyas. You have to love that out of a freshman, though, calling for the ball, wanting to be the player that's the difference maker and the playmaker out on the field. And on the other way, Carusa, she's going to goal. Played it across the mouth of the goal for a moment. As Caitlin Farrell had eyes for her second goal of this Big East final. Carusa again. That was a great ball by Kira Carusa. She continues to do such a nice job trying to set up her teammates. And because she draws so much attention, it frees up people over on the wings. You just cannot overstate her importance. The Georgetown team looking to host next week when the NCAA tournament bracket field of 64 is released. When you look back to what they did a few years ago when they were able to host a couple of rounds in the NCAA tournament and then they made it all the way to the College Cup. Really got off to a good start in that NCAA tournament. And then last year, despite the great season they had, they lost in the first round. But how big is it for a team like Georgetown to play at home? They even talked about it in this Big East final as Savage tries to find the ball at her feet. It's going to go all the way back to Ariel Schechtman. But Georgetown took on Xavier. It was scoreless through 110 minutes in a game that was played at Xavier. And then when Georgetown got to play at home in this facility that absolutely played perfect to their style of play, it was a much different result on Thursday as Georgetown got a 3-1 win. They really love playing here at home on this pitch. It gives a different meaning in terms of home field advantage. This is a grass field, which is very different from a lot of the turf fields that teams play on. It's a bit faster pace out on the field, which plays very well to Georgetown's strengths. And it's a huge field, which again, plays to their strengths they have so many players that are so dynamic and it's able to stretch out the defense a bit while they look to defend on this very large field yeah the pitch is in perfect condition of Bermuda field that has had some rye over seed to fill in with the green grass and nothing like playing soccer on a, a true grass pitch absolutely these Hoyas love it they love to play at home and Amanda Carolyn just coming into this contest for Georgetown she was very big for the Hoyas in the semifinals the win out of the contest with 14 minutes and 19 seconds remaining she had a big first half for Georgetown she can re-enter as we begin the second half with collegiate soccer rules. And you'll see Dave Nolan and Georgetown play almost their entire roster at times, uh, if you will, S making sure they can sub some fresh legs in, trying to take advantage of the rules if they can. Well, and certainly always thinking about next year and getting experience for other players. Miller settles at Paige Monahan trying to find the equalizer. And it looked like great defense by Jenna Royson there to end the threat. But Macy Miller almost created the equalizer. That was fantastic defense by Jenna Royson. She's only a freshman. As you see here, look at that play defensively against Paige Monahan, who is one of the top offensive threats in the Big East. And that's what's so incredible about Georgetown is not only do you have to get it through Ariel Sheckman and the athleticism that she presents, but it's so tough to get even a good look because the back line for the Hoyas is so good. Here's maybe another opportunity for Butler. And that's what Butler needs to do. They need to build off of that momentum. They just got a great opportunity generated by one of their playmakers. They need to continue to push and build off of the good things that they've done in this contest. Despite the fact that Georgetown scored that early goal, they have played some very good defense. Their defensive back line is held strong against a number of offensive opportunities by the Hoyas. So they certainly have reason here to be holding their heads up high. Look at the freshman Royson coming up the field. Jamina Watnick 
Gave it away, and now here comes Macy Miller. Here comes Butler. They've got a lot of room to try to make a move, but just when you thought that they had room, Sarah Trissel comes back and ends it in a blink of an eye. Fair enough, but that's what Butler needs to be doing more of, the counterattack in transition while this Hoyas defense is not set. Nizalek trying to feed it through. Livingston steps up to win it. Jimmy Watnick tries it from the outside, and that's one of the things that they really like, Paula Jamina Watnick, and what she has done this season, stepping up. Coach Dave Nolan feels like she has really come into her own this season as a junior, and you talked about how important it's going to be for Jamina Watnick next season when all these seniors retire. They're certainly going to have to have people to step into some of the offensive void that will be created when Caitlin Farrell and Kira Caruso leave. And I think she's a great candidate. I think Grace Nguyen is a player they're going to depend very heavily on. Carson Nizalek as well. And also Amanda Kirlin, who's on to the pitch. She started the first seven matches of the season, but it has come off the bench the rest of the season. And they feel like she probably is the best target player for the Hoyas, and she is one that comes off the bench for Dave Nolan. Well, and it's very tough because Amanda Carolyn has struggled with injuries throughout her career, and that's what happened this year as well, is that she got injured. She was preseason all Big East. But what I love about her is she just always seems to come back stronger and very focused in how she can help this team. And does it help her to come off the bench and know that she needs to really go hard for 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever that period is? Well, I think it's always helpful when you can sit and you can watch and see what the defense is doing and then come into the contest once you get a sense of how they're playing. She does that very well. She's demonstrated a lot of maturity out on the field for the Hoyas this season. See a Gainer, freshman from Shelby Township, Michigan. Onto the pitch for Butler. Ten minutes remaining in the first half. Kaitlin Farrell, Big East Offensive Player of the Year, the difference maker early on as Georgetown trying to stay unbeaten, try to win their third straight Big East final. It's another wonderful ball by Jenna Royson. And Amanda Carolyn just stayed with it, tried to get through the double team. And it's Annika Schmidt yet again. Jimmy Nowatnik with some fancy footwork outside the 18 and then tripped up. And a little extracurricular activity there after the whistle. The push so Paul by Madison Tooth. Going flying. We're going to get another look here. This is Jermino Watnick operating. She gets tripped up. Julia Leonard coming over. And as you said, Madison Toth with a bit of a push there. The official goes over to talk things over with her. She's another one of the players. It's very important for Butler to have her out on the field in terms of their defensive effort. What a great ball. Try to find the feet of the freshman of the year, Savage, and she is going to be tripped up. She draws a foul, and look at this. A short corner, if you will, coming the way of Butler. And the Hoyas can't believe it. We'll get another look here. Livingstone and Stout both back to defend. The foul was called on Stout. And you see her expression after the foul call. Talk about a good opportunity. Macy Miller over for the Bulldogs. She has really infused a lot of life into the Bulldogs, and actually now they'll send both Savage and Leonard. Almost everybody into the 18-yard box for Butler. Savage will take it, tries it to the top of the 18. Easily cleared. Jermina Watnick doing a great job just clearing that away from anywhere where it could be dangerous. And you see Jermina Watnick still in the mix for Georgetown. And Savage settle it. Ooh. Nice deflection by Livingstone. Monica Smith tried it. This is Macy Miller. She has been a real spark plug for Butler since she's come off the bench. 
Loose ball in the box, and Ariel Schachtman comes off her line to make the play. And you can see a little bit about what we've been talking about with Ariel Schachtman. Again, nothing intentional right here, but she did have a big collision with one of the Bulldogs, as we're going to look here. Livingston just couldn't clear it. That's Gaynor that she had the collision with. But I love the confidence of Ariel Sheckman. I mean, that's a fifth-year senior for you right there. She was not going to wait around any longer for her defenders to clear the ball. Instead, she just comes racing out of the goal. There was no hesitation there by Ariel Sheckman to make the stop. And again, the collision with Celia Gaynor. She's one of the freshmen for Butler. She's going to get some medical attention out on the field. So we'll take another look here. You see Caitlin Farrell there looking to defend. And as we talked about, just no hesitation. Livingstone was not able to clear it. Gaynor was changing direction. And just there was no way that Sheckman, with all the momentum and force that she was moving forward, could avoid Celia Gaynor. And you see the expression on her face, just a lot of pain out on the field. It's interesting because Ariel Sheckman began her career at UCLA, but it wasn't that she really became into the nation's spotlight until she transferred here to Georgetown. She's really had a remarkable last two seasons for Dave Nolan. And uh, you take a look at Ariel Sheckman. She's a real reason why Georgetown playing for their third straight title today because of the presence that she has been in goal for Georgetown. Georgetown has been a really good fit for her. She was at UCLA when she decided she wanted to transfer. She had already been on the radar with Georgetown, and it ended up just being a great fit for both, and really happy to see Celia Gaynor coming off the field under her own power. Certainly hope to see her back in this contest today. Well, it's the top two teams in the Big East battling in the Big East final. Not always you get the top two teams into the championship, but Georgetown unbeaten, 16-0-3 overall, 8-0-1 in the conference. Butler, 6-2-1. We talked about their great success that they had at home. For Butler, this is their highest finish ever since they joined the Big East. And they, these two teams have really had a remarkable seasons so far, Monica. And I think one reason for all of Butler's success this year is after last year, they, they felt like they had some unfinished business. They set very high expectations for themselves, even after they defeated Providence in the semifinals and that great win over an outstanding Providence team. It was really a muted celebration. They weren't just jumping for joy because they felt like, well, we're glad we're getting to the final, but we don't feel like we've accomplished what we set out to do yet. A couple of substitutes come in for Georgetown, including Casey Richards. Yeah, the lone school goal scorer in this Big East Championship, Keelan Farrell, getting a moment with the final seven minutes ticking out. Anna Savage, the Big East freshman of the year, she is still hunting for the equalizer for Butler. I love just how active Anya Savage is out on the field. She is looking for the ball every opportunity. She has had some big battles today with Kelly Ann Livingstone. But you have to imagine she's going to get her good opportunity today, the way she is battling and fighting out on the field. And it looks like Gaynor's going to already come back out. Very happy to see her coming back into this contest. A very tough freshman. She'll take the place of Katie Sonderson, the freshman from Carmel, Indiana. Two goals, four assists. Like it was all Butler the first three minutes misplayed ball allowed Keelan Farrell to get the championship's first goal. Then after that point, the Hoyas really controlled, but Butler has been a whole lot better offensively as we see on the other way. Paige Monahan going to goal, trying to get any opportunity set piece why she falls down. But they say it was a clean tackle. And that was Paige Monahan against three of the top defenders in the league. And you see 
how strong Monaghan was battling for that opportunity. The bubble is so much more composed the last 10 minutes of this one. This is Paige Monaghan again. I think you're seeing a lot of the Bulldogs experience right now. This is not phasing them. They're still playing their game out on the field. And again, I think they really have to be buoyed by their defensive effort at this point. That back line led by Schmidt has played so well in this contest. This really could be a very different contest if you didn't have Schmidt really locking things down back there. Georgetown could be up by three. Quite a collision there. And Butler's Amanda Kowalski kind of holding her arm. And we'll have another timeout on the field, 4.31 to play. The top two teams in the Big East battling today from our nation's capital. We'll get another look here at the injury to Kowalski, just a collision. <coughs> but the way these two teams are going after the ball. Every possession very critical at this point. I have really been impressed with Jenna Royson in this Big East tournament. Her play against Xavier in the semifinals, absolutely huge in winning the starting spot in this tournament final. It's not just her ability to push forward and become part of the offense, but she really can be a lockdown defender as well. She has had a couple of big defensive stops. That one early on was very big. That was one of Butler's best opportunities. It's just a misplayed ball there by Butler. I think they were trying to get it wide, trying to find the feet of Paige Monahan. They just could not connect on the pass. And they have three and a half minutes to try to chase the equalizer, at least in the first half of the Hoyas. Now they've got a chance to go up to Carusa. The ball at her feet inside the 18. Little ball play through, but they couldn't find the feet of Amanda Carolyn. That was Julia Leonard on the play defensively for Butler. Savage can't find Monahan. Cook plays it across midfield. The top two teams in the Big East, the Hoyas at home, the Butler Bulldogs battling for the second straight year for the Big East Championship. And these two teams, by the way, they have won the last three Big East Women's Soccer Championship. The seniors for Butler won this championship as freshmen and it has been Georgetown winning the last two. They're trying to become the first team since 2002 to win three straight tournament titles. It really tells you how tough things have been in the Big East. It is very difficult to repeat and to get a three-peat. Extremely difficult. Butler has won it back. Schmidt trying to send it wide. This is Soderstrom. And Soderstrom, not a good touch there. A little dis desperation right there by Butler. But again, it's Annika Schmidt pushing forward from the back line to generate that offensive opportunity for the Bulldogs. She and her teammate, Julia Leonard, I think have been the players for the Bulldogs in this first half. They have been absolutely outstanding all over the field. Butler trying to step up and win it again. The Hoyas defense has been on their heels a little bit. Paige Monahan had Miller run into the outside. Now they find the feet of Miller. What can she do with it with a minute and 18 seconds? Georgetown just does such a nice job coming back on defense. There are so many white jerseys out on the field. Every time Butler tries to connect a couple of passes, the ball gets intercepted by a Hoya. And you got to give Butler credit. 
they are not letting up in the slightest. And Monahan has worked so hard. She has been everywhere out on the field. Her work rate, very impressive. And then when last touch Paige Monahan, it'll go out of play. It'll be a throw in coming for number four Georgetown as the final 30 seconds tick away in this first half. Given the number of offensive opportunities that Georgetown has had in this first half, I think Butler has to be really happy with how they've defended for the majority of this contest. They haven't really gotten all the offensive opportunities that they've wanted, but I think they have to feel really good about the fact that they're just down by one. And the last thing they want to do is see the second goal come away in the final 10 seconds. It's not going to happen. Number four, Georgetown. They are at home trying to win their third straight Big East championship, trying to go to 17-0-3 on the season. And because of the Big East Offensive Player of the Year, Keelan Farrell, they have the first goal of this game. Keelan Farrell, four minutes into the match, got her 17th goal of the season. But Butler came back and played very well the last 20 minutes of the first half. Like I said, I think they have a lot to be happy with in this contest. Annika Schmidt, Julia Leonard doing such a nice job. I thought Lidke was very solid back in goal. They just need to get some of these offensive players going. I would expect to see a lot more of Macy Miller in the second half. I thought she really infused a lot of life into this Butler team. And I think we will certainly see Monahan and Savage connect on a couple of nice plays in the second half. What a dynamic first 15 minutes of the half it was for Georgetown as they continue to threaten Butler and Hannah Lipke. Keelan Farrell's early goal really helped set the tone for number four Georgetown as they jump down to the early lead. The so Georgetown team trying to win this Big East championship, trying to make sure that they are at home next week for the NCAA tournament. They're currently the number four team in the country. I would think that Dave Nolan would have to be pretty happy with the way that his team played in the first half. I think he has to be really happy with how hard they've fought and all the opportunities that they've created on offense. I think there's a couple of opportunities they'd like to have back. That one with Grace Nguyen comes to mind that they'd like to have gotten a little bit better of a strike on goal. Caitlin Farrell, Big East Offensive Player of the Year. Her 17th goal of the season as the Hoyas up early in the Big East Finals.